Hey, how's it going? Chef B Live here, and I am just so privileged to be here with Baba Dez and to be sharing the sacred space here in Sedona and this amazing information that he has with you. So, I don't know, I think we should just get started with this amazing conversation that's going to take place. So, uh, I know what my first question is, <laughs> and uh, it's basically something that, it's a term that you use often, it's your, it's, it's your title, the sacred sexual shaman. Can you explain that possibly, like in a little, just a little? Well, it's, uh, for me it's about, you know, it's about spiritual, sexual, and shamanic. And it's spiritual because it's what connects us with life force and uh, great spirit. And it's uh, sexual because sexual, sexual energy and sexuality is life force energy. So that's a very powerful force to tap into. And the shamanic aspect is about dealing with everything that's keeping us from, from being there. You know, uh, um, issues, all our blocks and our challenges and our fears and things that keep us from being the love that we are. Hmm. So that's that's how I like to approach it. Awesome. Yeah. I, I resonate with that. I think that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. Well, and I, I really appreciate the opportunity. And one of the wonderful things that happened was at our last training here in Sedona, uh, we had your wonderful food here. And, and uh, it was really supportive to have uh, really healthy food to uh, support the people that are coming from many different lifestyles to not only have these experiences but to understand what healthy nutrition is and how that can help absolutely uh, help help the whole process of being an alive being totally yeah. thank you for that it was an amazing experience my favorite catering experience of all time <laughs> <laughs> so it was awesome yeah, thank you awesome. yeah so um, my question would be I know a lot of people come to you as a practitioner because they have some kind of deep sexual wounds mm -hmm. or issues that they may be dealing with and so how do you help them to overcome and deal with those wounds well you know i feel like what's the, you know the bottom line is that you know we're all we're all born into this world we're born into a collective consciousness mm -hmm. and uh, what we're doing is we're moving through our evolution as human beings and we're discovering what are the things that serve us what are the things that uh that you know, the service to create a healthier, happier life. What are the things that that uh, that create um, um, you know a lack of uh, a lack of joy, a lack of ease, and and so uh, more people are wanting to really tap into their power, tap into the magic, and have help happier, healthier lives. So um, so that's where people people are, are are starting to realize, hey, you know, maybe someone's been on a spiritual path for a long time. Or maybe somebody's um, really uh, been really wanting to be the, the best human being they can possibly be, and yet they're realizing that they're that that, that they're missing something. That that they need some support. They need some help. They need some guidance. So you know, I mean, through all time, people have been searching out. You know, have been asking these questions and have been wanting to discover who they who they are and, and how they can be the most amazing human beings they can be. So um, so that's that's why they come to me. You know. Um, and sometimes they have specific issues, and sometimes they're just general issues of just wanting to accelerate their their journey. What are the most common like blocks? Well, you know, some of the most some of the most common blocks and issues are um, are uh, um, maybe somebody has some kind of sexual dysfunctional issue. They're they're not or they're not orgasmic, or they're they uh, they're they're they they're premature ejaculators. Um, they just maybe they're just having challenges in their relationships and in their family life and their in their love relationships and their work relationships, and uh, they they keep uh, having resistance and problems and they want to get beyond those things so they, they can enjoy a, a happier healthier um, relational life with everybody. Really. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I know that I have my wounds and I've been I've been healing them and it's interesting because coming here to Sedona for the catering gig that I did for you guys, yeah, yeah it just completely activated this like kundalini energy that was almost it's really like unexplainable it's like and i knew that it had to do with the sexual like you know kundalini energy and, it's, and then i got to see this like power behind me myself you know behind me right and uh and it was just interesting that it happened like all in alignment it was like i came here it activated and then since then i've been really trying to find and that's why i'm really looking mm -hmm. forward to doing 
the training because just mm -hmm. to really figure out how to work with that energy. And it's amazing. Yeah, well, you know, it, 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 it's an interesting context because a lot of people will talk about kundalini awakening. And what I really feel is that the kundalini energy and the life force energy is awake. And what happens is when we bring our conscious awareness to it, what happens is everything that's blocking that energy comes, it comes up. So, you know, it's not so much that, that we need to awaken our kundalini energy, it's just that we need to remove the blocks mm. that are preventing it from really allowing us to be the magical divine conduits that we are. Wow. So, so in that presence, you know, um, uh, that's what comes up. And, and in the training, that's the whole intention. We create a container and, um, and, uh, and in that container, that safe container uh, that everybody's in, um, the issues come up. And, and so we just keep trying to find, we're looking at the ways, where, where am I blocked, where, where can I find my ease, and what are the things that are coming up in this container. It's kind of like creating that pressure cooker or that, that microscope that, that um, in a very short amount of time brings these things to the surface so that they can be addressed and resolved. Totally. Because yeah. I feel, for me, I, I, I know I'm doing it on a, on a self-realization personal level. Mm -hmm. But boy, if I had some guidance, and if I like, I, yeah. I just I know the the expansion of it, how how much bigger it would like, just infinite it would be. So well, and that's really key because yeah. because because if you have the awareness that you know you're doing it, and you know that there's a, that there's blocks, then you can start uh, addressing them. Yeah. But oftentimes people are having these issues and situations and circumstances, and they're not even aware that it's going on, and they just know something doesn't feel good. So, Unfortunately, um, that's the majority of people on the yeah. planet, you know. I mean, yeah. But that's not going to be for long, right? <laughs> it's all shifting. It's all changing. Activate. Right on. I would love it if you spoke about moving the energy um, through the emotional body oh, yeah. and how the tantra work is so different from, say, therapy, traditional therapy, because of a, the issue of addressing the emotional body and how that moves things quicker and how we store. Right. Well, you know, it's. Um, uh, I think the emotional body is really key because a lot of people, you know, we have these powerful minds, and and uh, you know, when we grow up, we're really, um, oftentimes, we're celebrated and we cultivate, you know, this uh, mental capacity, and our schooling and everything is very focused on how much we know up here and and uh, and how clever we can be as far as our minds. The other thing that we really develop is our bodies, you know, either through nutrition or through um, uh, you know, sports and athletics, and, and really in this culture we're rewarded for, for either how smart we are or how beautiful we are or how handsome we are, and uh, we're not, we don't really cultivate, we're not really supported to really bring in a lot of mastery around our, our ability to love and our ability to feel. You yeah. know, so those, those parts of our beings really aren't developed as strongly as our bodies and our minds. So, and the emotional body is really important because it is the energy, it's the engine of manifestation, and it's that vibrating energy that actually magnetizes life, magnetizes abundance, magnetizes health and magic to us. And, and, uh, and of course, the, the heart is about our capacity to really love and to create communion and to create synergy with people and ease. So, um, so uh, if we can um, step back and not be so in our minds and we can actually tap into true wisdom, which lives in our bodies, and true wisdom lives in our bellies and our hearts, then what happens is, uh, is, is we can tap into a deeper source of knowing that is beyond the mind and then magic starts to happen. So that's, that, that's really key, key to the emotional body. So we use different tools and techniques to help people get their emotional bodies vibrating and, to, and how to actually start using that energy and directing that energy. Mm. Well, okay. yeah, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I know he's experienced it. Yeah. So. Now you were, you did, you were at the I level the one part training. Way, part one training. That's yeah. right, that's yeah. right. And Sonia, you were at that training Sonia as well. Was at the part so, one so training. we have some people here that were actually in the training. So powerful, could, powerful medicine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hugely powerful medicine. I feel like the energy moving techniques were some of the was like the most profound stuff that I took from it. Cool. That I'm still using, and um, it's really, really. Uh, it's really amazing what will happen once you actually move energy out of your body that just feels stuck. Because then it's like, wow, all of this pressure is gone. It's just like there was just stuck emotion, just stuck blah. And it needed to... And what happens when that energy moves 
that energy that's stuck is more spaces created inside of us, and in that spaciousness, spirit can come and fill us, mm. and and that and that's really the key of it is is how to release all the stuff that we're we're not even aware that we're holding on to, and then um, once that spaciousness is created, to look at the beliefs and the judgments and the telepathic agreements that actually cement um, our reality in place and and keep us in a limited reality. So um, it's one thing to vibrate the emotional body. It's another thing to, to then bring conscious awareness to what it is that, that can keep freeing up that energy. And that's where the tools and techniques come in and you experience that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a question about the tools and techniques. Um, is it kind of a, a general thing that you use for most of the sessions or do you make it individual? individualize the techniques for each person? Well, you, we, we create a framework and there's some basic tools. You know, like There's basically uh, four ways that are really effective for activating the emotional body. And one of the ways is, is breath work, shamanic breath work, holotropic breath work, um, rebirthing. Real powerful tool for tapping into that uh, unconscious or subconscious emotional body. Um, the other tools that we learned in the training, which is quite unique, are the seven tools. They're shamanic tools that actually um, uh, create a safe, uh, create safety so that we can feel the intense emotions that oftentimes are, are judged or denied, like the sadness and grief and rage and anger. And, uh, you know, um, some spiritual traditions even call those um, emotions uh, negative. And, you know, there is no such thing as a negative emotion. Emotions are all beautiful. It's just how we express those emotions. And if we learn how to express them responsibly without hurting ourselves or anyone or anything, then those emotions can move. But most people just shut them down because they're afraid to express them because they may get hurt or somebody might get hurt or something like that. So the tools are important for moving that energy in a responsible way. And then, and then when, once they move, then they have, you have that spacious experience. The other two modalities are something called sacred spot work, which is a um, sacred spot is an is a ancient temple ritual that is used to, to contact that part of our bodies where the emotional body sits. And, and it's actually done through digital penetration of the yoni or the vagina uh, or even anal work. But uh, oftentimes, just even just energetically uh, bringing focus to that, er en that area can start to move that, um, that energy. So people that have had um, any kind of sexual abuse issues, whether it be physical, emotional, um, uh, uh, energetic uh, abuse, you know, everybody in the culture at some level is dealing with sexual abuse, um, whether it's uh, you know whether it's uh, uh, obvious or not, uh, it can be quite subtle. But those those imprints are in our bodies, and so they need to be they need to move. So uh, sacred spot work is a very powerful tool. It's an ancient temple ritual um, that uh, that can activate that emotional body and and create the clearing from past woundings and things that we're holding on to. The fourth modality is conscious penetration, and. Uh, you know, it's interesting talking about this, especially just to ordinary people, because um, there's so much judgment and so much fear around sexuality and the power of our sexuality. And, um, and, and so what we really need to do, well, we, using those four different techniques, is we need to really go back to where it all starts, which is basically with our first sexual experience. And our first sexual experience is our conception. It's when our mothers and our fathers got together, made love, had sex, and, and we actually came into manifestation in our mother's wombs. So what was going on energetically with our mothers and our fathers at that time of conception? Because that, that's wow. our starting that's point. Oh, true. Wow. Then, then we spend nine months in the womb. And what's happening with our mother's neurology? What's happening for her during those nine months? Because during those nine months, uh, you, you know, whatever's happening with our mothers, and oftentimes they're not living in their power and their ease all the time. And what we start learning neurologically is that there's a challenge, and, and our mothers have a challenge, and either they, they masterfully come back into their ease, and we feel that in the womb, and, and we start patterning a neur neurology of challenge, ease, challenge, ease, or the challenges come, and, 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 we, and our mothers, unfortunately, never come back into their ease. So what happens is they're constantly in their anxiety. They're constantly not feeling safe. They're, they're, they're not living totally in their ease. And energetically, we start modeling that. 
So right from the very beginning, most of us aren't living in our ease. Mm. And, and we, we grow up in that environment. Then we come into the breathing world when, when we're birthed or we're born. And, and, um, and oftentimes it continues from there because our parents just don't have the tools. They didn't have the mastery. So the dysfunction just gets passed on generation to generation to generation unless we are able to, um, one of two things, either be lucky enough to born to extraordinary parents that are masterful in coming back into their ease, or we shamanically go back and we recapitulate and we um, basically rebirth ourselves, and mm. we, we, we reconceive ourselves, and we shift our neurology based on the shamanic tools to um, re reparent ourselves as if we had the most amazing man and woman in the world as our parents. Wow. And so we, <laughs> then we internalize that, and then we can, then we can uh, shift our, our energy bodies and our, and our neurological patterning so that we're actually living more in our ease than in uh, that space of, uh, of uh, agitation or lack of ease. Or dis-ease. Yeah, dis-ease, yeah. That's, that's Which that's creates dis <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So, just so that, that's really, that's really, that's a lot of it right there. It's okay. just like really looking at the neurological patterning so that we have a chance to live in our ease. Because we're not even, most of us aren't even aware of how, um, how much tension and how much anxiety we're holding until we start really releasing all those charges that are held in the emotional body and then we start going, oh my God. It's like there's so much spaciousness, there's so much ease. I didn't even know this was possible. And so then we ground that and carry on from there. Yeah. yeah. It's more of a tease for me again. Tease. <laughs> Yeah, what he's not telling you is an ongoing, lifetime process. Right. No, I, I believe me. That, that's what life is, right? <laughs> yeah, but see, here's the thing. If we were born into it, yeah. we would know it, and it would yeah. be easy. Yeah. But because we've been patterned to live a whole different way, it takes a lot of personal power and desire and commitment to reshift our neurology so that we can actually start to learn how to live in our ease. So it, it's one thing to understand the concept, and it's another thing to actually go through the process. So that's the value of the training, because it really takes you through that process and, 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 and uh, sets you up in a way where you can actually start living your life in a way that, that, can, that can live your life in a way that actually um, supports you to be a powerful being. Because power can only really happen when you're in your ease. And magic can only happen when you're in your ease. Totally. So that's, that's, that's the key. The key <laughs> is in the emotional body. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So I have a question about, sure. um, I know there's probably a lot of our viewers who have questions about their partnerships and their relationships. So what kind of, how do you help people to tune into their partners more fully? Well, you know, partnership, the first relationship is here inside. So if you're able to tune into yourself and you're able to tune into the wisdom of your own heart and your own body and your own emotional body, then, then your first relationship is working. From that place, then you can actually start to engage with, with another person and have a, have, a, have a healthy relationship with possibilities. Because what happens is most people are projecting their issues outside of themselves, and they're not able really to focus and bring it all the way back home to themselves and, and create that independent resolution right, in them. Right. So, um, you know, uh, it, 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 it's it's virtually. I mean, it's 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 really it's really challenging, because um, the more people that actually wake up and, and can really know themselves intimately and be able to respond to themselves intimately, um, when you get into that energetic field with somebody, then all of a sudden there is that spaciousness. There's all those things that really matter, and part of the things we use we use these archetypes. We use the archetypes of what we call the divine masculine and feminine. And those archetypes are really crucial because it's the divine masculine and feminine that are really those internalized mothers and fathers that we didn't actually have. And, and, and maybe we had them somewhat, but uh, really what we need is we need to, to really get that all the way in our beings because once we can internalize that, then we start living our lives from the place of, okay, what does the most beautiful man and woman in the universe want now? Mm. And, and they give us the answers inside of us. Yeah. And if we're not in touch with that, then it's going to be hard to, um, to know what, where to go, what are the choices, how should I move in my life. 
you know, what are the best possibilities. So, so we really anchor those archetypes deeply inside of us so that, uh, so that we can start moving forward with that clarity. And, um, and then relationship becomes a gift because um, most people use relationship for this. <laughs> and what we want to do is we want to support people to start reusing relationship for this. And, um, and so if we can create independent resolution and move our emotional bodies and not, it's not about there's issues with my partner and now I need to work it out with them or with my boss or with my mechanic or whatever it is. It's really about finding the ease within our own beings first and from that ease we come into independent resolution and then it's just a matter of having conversations that are empowering that can create um, resolution to the issues rather than the emotional charge that keeps people polarized. Yeah, I remember doing that in the training when we were doing the aspecting. Yeah. And it was really cool, it was really profound for me to have conversations with, you know, people like you know, my mother or my father that I wouldn't necessarily be able to have with them face to face. Exactly. Because of what their responses may be or what their energy is. So just having that conversation and then being able to flip it around and be become my mother or father and then sit, and then having the conversation with myself and um, really getting into that energy and that emotion that was really, you know, a deep profound experience for me. And the beautiful thing is that is that it's it's um, Again, it's it's releasing the emotional charge. So it's not even you know like the modern the modern tools, the psychological tools of voice, dialogue, and aspecting, the shamanic and, and, and uh, modern psychology teach us those tools. But more than having a conversation, it's really an emotional exchange because again it, we're we're addressing the emotional body, not just a mental conversation. So uh, and then having what we call the seven tools to actually move that emotional energy is really what's going to create the spaciousness and the resolution. So when you do that on your own, then you can have the conversation with your mother, your father, your mechanic, yeah. God, yeah. your partner, whoever, you know, and, 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 it, and then it, it becomes more of a, um, a loving communication rather than just a, a way to get the emotions moving. You know, we want to move the emotions first so that we can have this. That's great. Thank you. I know I, I, know I left here last time Mm -hmm. And I, I had this awareness that I needed to have this personal, like, open relationship with myself. I literally went back, broke up with my girlfriend, and, I mean, just that's how much, that's how profound coming here was for me, you know? And all this stuff has happened to me ever since. Wow. And I'm just like... Yeah, I mean, for me... You were just in the field, man. you got to come back and do the training. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, it's such a tease. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I've, it's, it did, like, like not even doing the training, coming right. here, like, right. activated me. And you I, got it. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's... Good for you. Yeah, you're That's doing amazing work that, I mean, I could, like, literally lead, just come in into the atmosphere, into the energy and, like, the vortex of it and, like, actually... Right. Be activated. Beautiful. Osmosis. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, we've got we've got four more trainings this summer. We've got some in the fall. And I still need I still need the tools. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not cool. doing this by myself. Cool. Okay, I don't want it to take hundred years. Don't think. Yeah. No. <laughs> we can actually it can be quite rapid. You totally. know what we do in seven days is pretty miraculous. Yeah. No, I want to do the fourteen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Level one and two back to back. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> oh yeah.